And uh, just want to let you know that um, for those of you who are used to seeing Kira in this spot, that she will be back next week. But my name is John and I'm hosting here tonight. And I am here with Kirsten, who is going to be teaching us the uh, Peace Reef painting this evening. We're pretty excited about it and I hope you are too. So thank you to Michaels for having us as always in our normal Monday night spot. Um, you know, just a couple of things for those of you who have been on these Michaels classes before, you know the routine. For those of you who haven't, we certainly welcome you. Um, Kirsten's going to do her best to keep a good pace for everybody. Sometimes it's a little fast for some people and a little slow for some people. But the good news about all of these classes, keep in mind, is that they are being recorded and they're available on Michael's website so that you can go back and watch at your own pace. You can pause, you can rewind, you okay. can, um, uh, you know, just paint along when you, when you have the opportunity. So the key here is just to um, enjoy and have fun. So again, uh, we are here from Plaid. We do it every Monday night with Michael's classroom and we are super excited. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just hand it over to Kirsten to start us off. Hey everybody, I'm so excited you guys are here. Merry Christmas, a little bit early. Um, okay, first I just wanna go over what I am gonna use for tonight's class for this canvas. I already saw a few questions about what if your canvas is not 10 by 10 do whatever size canvas is best. If you have one that's a little bit bigger, one that's a little bit smaller, really just have fun with it and use what you have. And the same thing about paints. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm using, um, but if you have a green that's a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, maybe you don't wanna add light blue at all, maybe you don't wanna add red, use whatever palette that you like. But this is about learning the techniques and really just painting um, this style of painting. So what we are gonna use is I have wicker white. I have, let's see, ocean view. I have a dark blue. This is navy, but any dark blue. I have, I'm using cardinal red, but again, any red that you have would be perfect. And then I'm using two shades of green. I'm using hunter green and clover. But the rule for this is just have two greens, a dark green and a little bit lighter green. But if you don't, you can always mix white to get a shade lighter. Now, the most exciting thing about tonight is I am going to base coat my canvas with home decor chalk paint. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because we are going to, I think you can tell, this is a very soft watercolor technique. And we have, we have learned that when you base coat a surface that's not necessarily perfect for watercolor um, will work, but it could be a little bit better with the matte chalk uh, home decor paint. It makes it perfect for watercolor. Um, so that's a little tip and technique for anything that you guys do in the future. But that is why we are base coating with chalk paint because it is very, very matte and it allows... Um, you to get more of the characteristics that you would get if you were working on watercolor paper. Okay, so then you have a basic brush set, which, and here the rule of thumb is just make sure you have a good brush for base coating, a few little smaller flat brushes, and then some round brushes. The set that I called out for is a three and a one round, a 10 and a six flat, and then this is a three quarter inch flat. Um, so use those brushes. You are gonna need a little scrap piece of paper, um, some tape if you're more confident stenciling. This is also the stencil that we called out for in the instructions. So this is an amazing stencil. It's Folk Art Lily and Val. I wanna make sure you guys can see it. And it is just an assortment of alphabets with a few little embellishments, some vines and some flowers. You can do the painting if you don't have this, but what the goal is, is just to show you how you can incorporate um, stencils into anything that you paint on canvas. Um, you'll need a pencil because we're gonna do a little pattern. And one thing while we're base coating, I want you guys to have just a plate, um, you could have a foam plate, you could have a bowl, but grab something from your kitchen that when you set that on your canvas, it is the size of your wreath. Can you see, this is just a little salad plate. It's about seven and a half, seven inches. Anything close to that, 
I want you to use that as a pattern. So run into your kitchen and grab a, a little plate or a little bowl or just something to make painting the circle very, very easy. Okay, so with that, you should just have a palette and some water and now we can get started. So the first thing that we are gonna do is we are going to base coat our canvas with white chalk paint. And Kirsten, there was a couple of people in the chat saying if they didn't have chalk paint, could they just use acrylic to, to base coat the uh, canvas? You know what? If you don't have chalk paint, I would actually skip and not base coat your canvas at all. Most canvases for Michaels are such a really nice, smooth finish. Um, so I wouldn't even waste the time base coating it with the white. The okay. only benefit that we have from using the chalk paint is you will still get all the techniques to do this exact painting, but the chalk paint is just gonna make your canvas a little bit more of a matte finish, which makes working a watercolor technique a little bit easier. Great, and but we do not need a pattern for tonight, right? People are asking, is there a pattern that they need to, to, nope. to get? You do nope. not need a pattern. All you need is a bowl or a plate because the right. only pattern that we are gonna do is to create the base circle for our wreath. Okay. And then um, also just when we get there, if you know if people are having trouble with a particular color that they weren't able to get, you'll be able to talk them through how to maybe create a color out of something else. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So I am just getting a really thin, even base coat, white on white. I know that's weird, but again, the only reason is it's such a nice matte, super matte finish that it lets the techniques that we're learning tonight be just a little bit easier to learn. But don't worry if you're not base coating with chalk paint, that is absolutely okay. So you just want a really even coat. You don't want any areas that are thicker. So just smooth that out. And then I am gonna hit this with a blow dryer because one thing is you definitely don't wanna work on wet paint. So while you guys are base coating and running into your kitchen, I'm gonna set that little plate there. That's your only pattern. I'm gonna blow dry this so that, is, so that it is dry. Okay, that always feels like it took forever, but the paint, the acrylic, the chalk paint and the folk art acrylics, they dry so quickly. That's one of the beautiful things about working with acrylic paint. Um, I did see a lady really quick when I was blow drying my canvas. So for a pattern, all we need is the bowl or the plate, but we do need a stencil. I saw somebody um, ask on the comments if we need a stencil. And we are using the Folk Art Lillian Val. This is called Mixed Fonts. And all we're going to need this for, if you don't have it, that's okay. So that's going to personalize our word in the middle. And it's also gonna accent just the very littlest details, the berries and those really fine little branches. The rest is gonna be done through techniques. Did that answer those questions? I hope it yeah. did. Yeah, it did. And honestly, like it's one of those things where you could go back and go get a stencil later and fill that in, or you could do some hand lettering, or you could even Absolutely. use like a marker, you know, yep. whatever. Absolutely. You could hand letter, you could put your last name, that we just really wanted to show how, how much you can do by adding a stencil to a painting and how you just have so many more options of creativity. Yeah. Okay. 
How's everyone's very, very simple base coat? I think everyone's doing fine. We're ready to go. All righty. So just a little pencil. And the only rule of thumb with this is very, very light touch. You never want to have to work to paint over your pattern. So all I'm going to do is place my little salad plate on the center of my canvas, just kind of eyeball it. And with the lightest touch, just trace a perfect circle around your plate. You don't want to mash too hard because you don't want to have to work to cover that up. It's actually so light you guys can't see it. But can you see? Oh, there we can see it. Yep. Just a circle in the middle of your canvas. I'm going to scoot this in to make sure everybody can see it. Okay, now I'm going to use my lighter green, which I'm using clover, and I'm going to put a little bit of that on my palette. So, John, this is where you asked if they didn't have clover, they're using a different <laughs> green. Just well, that would be one, yes. Just use the lighter of the two greens. So you should have a light one or a dark one, or if you only have one, mix a little bit of white in it just to get a lighter shade of green. And then I'm gonna get my number three round brush. I'm gonna get that wet and I am just going to water down the paint on the edge of the paint that I applied to my palette. So see how it's probably about 50% water and 50% paint. And it's just a very thin, can you guys see that? Just a very yep. thin, almost, almost milk-like consistency. I'm gonna roll that out. So in the paint and then just kind of roll it out. So you just don't have a lot of paint dripping off the edge of your brush. And all I'm gonna do is simply trace that pencil circle picking up paint as you need it. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get a good base for your Christmas wreath. And for those who did base coat their canvas with the chalk paint, you can just see how quickly the paint absorbs into that, that matte finish just like it would if you were working on watercolor paper. Okay, you did so, that so fast that I'm sure people are gonna need a second to catch up because that no, was- Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That was wicked all, fast, we like to say in Massachusetts. All you're doing is, is painting over your pencil pattern. Okay. I'm gonna slow down. Okay, how are we doing? All right, I think everyone's probably doing okay. I don't hear anybody chatting that they're not ready. So I think we're in good shape. Good. Okay, and so now what, I, the main thing I want you guys to know when you're painting this is I want you to, I don't want you to overthink this circle. I don't want you to look at this and want to have a holly berry exactly there and exactly there and exactly there. I'm gonna teach you four different types of leaves and I just want you to randomly put them around this circle. Does that make sense? So I don't want you to overthink it and, and, get, and get so caught up on the details where the holly leaves have to be spaced apart exactly like this. Because when that happens, you're not gonna have as much fun creating the wreath. I want you to learn the different leaves but be very, very random and loose about them. So the first one that I am gonna add is just, it's, let's see if you guys can see this. I'm gonna practice it right here. So it's just a really basic leaf, an oval with a point. You're gonna start at the point and do a half circle, start at the point and connect the leaf. I'm gonna pick up paint with less water. I'm gonna start on the point and just do a little curve, start on the point and end like a little teardrop. So that's the first leaf that we're gonna do. Again, with about half water, half paint. So you have a very thin wash in the lighter green. Roll your brush so you don't have too much paint dripping off the end. And very randomly, start on your point, half circle, start on your point, do the other side. 
start on your point. And you're just connecting those to the circle as the base. Very random. You can do two, almost like a, a circle vine. And also something I always tell people is move your canvas around to what is comfortable. It's comfortable for me to always pull my brush strokes towards me instead of moving my hand up like that. So move the canvas so that you're very comfortable pulling your brush strokes towards you if that's what's best for you. But see how the spacing is not exact, the leaves are not exact. That actually will make for a, a prettier wreath in the end. You don't want it to be put together in perfect order. It's a good point about moving the canvas. I've heard that in a couple of classes because some, for some reason people think like, oh, because it's painting, they're not allowed to move their canvas. But right. you keep turning the canvas, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely, you wanna do what is, what is comfortable. But just very random leaves. And then also with the watered down paint, I'm just gonna go in there and fill each one in. So this was the lighter of your two green paints. It was about 50-50 water that you had. Uh -huh. And you're using a number three round brush to create these little shapes. Yep. Perfect. And Good. then add water and paint. Mix that as you need it. The more water you use, the lighter your color is. The less, the darker. So also use that kind of as a guide so you get the exact color that you want. But you can see this is just very loose. This is almost the first couple um, couple leaves that we add to our wreath is really just creating the base coat to add the details at the very end. So that's your first almost base coat leaf pattern. And then I'm gonna clean off that brush and I'm gonna get a little bit of the light blue. And for this, I'm using Ocean View. And I'm gonna put that on the palette just a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add water just to the edge of that little drop of paint and just water that down about 50-50, mixing it really good. Okay. And um, obviously, if they don't have ocean blue, they can use any kind of a darker blue with a little bit of white or, Absolutely. right? Yep, any kind, like a soft teal, a baby blue. If you do have a navy, you could have mostly white with just the tiniest touch of the navy blue, but you just want a soft blue. And if you don't want the blue, um, you could use a lime green. You could even use a yellow or a mustard. There's really so much that you can use. Let me hold this up just so you guys can see. It's so hard to tell. But see those little hints of blue? Mm. That's base coating now, which if you wanted those to be mustard or like maybe even a rusty color or a different shade of green, it would be very pretty. Okay. So now doing that exact same leaf pattern, start on the tip and pull down. I'm just gonna add a few more leaves going around the edge of the circle. And not in any particular order. And don't worry guys, don't, we'll, we'll give you a chance oh. to catch up here in just a second. So once, wow. once she shows you how to get all these leaves on, then we can take a second and let people catch up. Because the main thing when you're doing this is don't put so many leaves that you eliminate all the white space. You want those openings, but they just don't have to be exactly the same and they don't have to be perfect. But you wanna just randomly add a few different sizes. You can see that little guy's a little bit smaller, totally okay. Pick up paint as you need it. And then the same thing, I need a little bit more water. So I'm gonna mix that paint again on my palette. And then I'm just gonna go in and fill in those little leaves.
Remember, this is just really more of our base coat, more of layering color, but all very soft, which is the watercolor technique. If you, it's hard to show you guys on this, but it's so neat to see, and I'm sure you guys can see it at home. You can see areas where you're outlined because you're doing the watercolor technique is a little bit darker than the inside because the matte canvas from the chalk paint, that is just such an, a beautiful technique when working um, with watercolors. That's why I love folk art paint. There's so much you can do with it. Like it's obviously the greatest acrylic paint, but just a little bit of water, you can get all the characteristics of a, of a really great watercolor paint. There's so much you can do with acrylics. Okay, so that's Here's our second little Nope. Yeah. Oh, while people are while people are still filling in their leaves, can you hold up the finished painting up close for people? Because they just want to see. Absolutely. I think. Yep. Oh, how about right yep, there? Yep, that's perfect. Yeah. And it's hard okay. to see. We're actually going to cover up. You can see where there. It just appears like there's almost solid color as the base. Like, see that little leaf right there? That's one of our base coat leaves that we're doing. This little guy, oh, where am I? This little guy peeking out is one of our base coat leaves, this little guy. But you can see the reason why they don't have to be perfect is because we're covering them up with all of the great detail. Great. Good, okay. Okay. I'm gonna hold that up just so you guys can yes, kind of see. everybody doing okay on getting their leaves filled in? All right. Remember, it only gets cute at the end. <laughs> it's kind of rough at the beginning. Right. But just very random, making sure that you leave some space in between. Okay. I'm going to just clean my brushes while everybody's catching up. Yep. Okay, I'm only preparing my palette, and now I'm getting my darker green, which I'm using hunter green. And I'm just putting that onto my palette. How are we doing? Should I should I wait a minute? Absolutely fine. I think we're doing okay. Doing all right? Yep. Now you shouldn't have, I'm just looking at mine. Mine is almost dry. Like it dries so quick, quick whenever you work with acrylic paint. Make sure when I've, I've got you guys adding water to your paint, make sure that doesn't mean that you have a lot more paint on your canvas. You still want to just have a really even thin coat for all of your base coat leaves because you want um, you want your paint to dry pretty quick as we go through the steps. I can see on mine it's all almost completely dry which is actually what you want. So now I've got my dark green on the on the palette and I'm gonna do that exact same thing, pulling some water into the side of the paint and mixing that up really, really good. So it's very thin consistency. But still, when you add water, it still has the rich color. So this is now the darker of your two greens. And then some folks yeah, were asking again, the, the first part was the lighter of your green or you could make it with some green and white and then now she's using the darker of your two greens. Yep, absolutely. So if you're not working with two greens, add white to make your lighter green. But if you're using uh, the supply list that we gave you, hunter green is our dark green. And all I'm doing is adding water on the edge of the paint on my palette. And I switch to the thin to the smallest liner brush. I'm using a number one. Um, use whatever brush you're comfortable with. You could still use a three, a one. They have even thinner ones if that's something that you're more comfortable with. But this is a number one liner. All right. How about leaf number two? Are we ready? Yeah, let's go. We're ready. Okay. Rolling your paint or rolling, I'm sorry, rolling your brush in the paint. What that does is it takes off the excess and it just guarantees that you have a really nice point. 
And all I'm going to do, just so you guys know, we're going to be painting these little Christmas pine branches. So what I'm going to do for that is I am just going to do some lines connecting to the circle. Again, very random. You can go over a few leaves, but just go in between and over. Don't space them out exactly. Turn your canvas as you need to. You wanna go in a few different directions. Make sure they're not all going exactly the same. Almost looks like a little thorn bush wreath. So once you have your lines, picking up more paint, I want you to do the little details. So you're gonna do a little V at the end and then Vs all the way down the stem. You guys see that? So a little V at the top and then just creating Vs all the way down the stem. A little V at the top and just very loose. Don't make them exactly the same. And that water allows your paint to just move so nicely on the canvas. Pick up water and mix it into the side of that paint as you need it. Roll your brush to get a really nice dip. And here again, see how I'm moving my canvas? Because it's most comfortable for me to pull towards me whenever I'm painting. So that one, I'm gonna pull towards me. See how you get so many strokes because you've added the water to the paint? A little V and then just a little bit bigger. And be very confident in areas like this. Let's see if you guys can see. See where that, that branch overlap that leaf? As we add leaves, that's what you want. So just be really confident when you have a random pattern that's overlapping what you've already done. For this little guy, I'm gonna turn my canvas. Oh, for him, he's the totally opposite. So I'm gonna move it that way. Oh, that V's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. I'll turn it all the way back around. The Folk Art acrylic right out of the bottle is so thick and creamy. Definitely make sure that you spend a minute mixing it when you mix it with the water, because otherwise you'll get um, thick and thin areas of paint, and that's not what you want for a watercolor technique. Oh, that one's going that way, so it's most natural to go like that. I'm seeing lots of folks painting along. I'm just scrolling through everybody's gallery view here and I'm seeing lots of painters. Looks good. Oh, I love that. Seeing everyone's work is my favorite thing. Yep. Look, I turn my canvas a lot. See right there, you can see I'm going over that blue leaf. That's perfect. You wanna view this, this is still really kind of a base coat still. Cause it's just filling in color and shapes to create the final wreath. I always set it down and kind of look at it, see if I've got any areas like that is a little bit fuller and I love that. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it, that's fuller. So maybe I need one or two more sprigs over on the other side. Always take a minute and pull back from your canvas just to look at it and make sure it's going in the direction that you want. I'm gonna add two more there. I think I'm gonna add one more right there. And maybe one up here going that way. 
Then I'm gonna fill those in with the little V's. Oh, see, I have too much paint on the tip. Gotta make sure you stir it up really good. but you're not filling in every area. I've still got some white areas because we've got one more leaf that we're gonna learn. And then we're gonna use the stencil to accent everything and complete it. Oh, I moved this canvas a whole bunch. Maybe one more at the top. Nope, I'm not gonna. Okay, any questions on this little almost pine branch? I don't think there's any questions, but people are enjoying it, seeing how nice it looks, so. I've and everybody remember too, if it just, if it gets going too fast, you can, um, you can, you know, just just stop and watch for a little bit and then go and watch the recording and you can do it at any pace that you like. That's always an option for you, but it's great to just kind of watch and listen to the techniques and then, um, you know, so that you hear directly from Kirsten how to do it and then you can go back and watch. Yep. Okay. And we've got so one more type of leaf coming, is that right? Yep, we've got one more leaf. Holly just leaves a... looks like. Yep, we're gonna do, okay, I'm gonna hold it up for this one. So we did our little base coat leaf that you can see. Then we've done our little pine branch. And now we're gonna do these little holly leaves that you can see on here. There's a good one right there. And what we're gonna do for anyone that it wants to be prepared, we are going, to, oh, here's an even better one. See this little guy? So we are gonna use our light green and our dark green. And we're gonna do one side in the dark green and one side in the light green. So if you were somebody that was mixing, make sure you've got a little bit of both, both shades of green. So here is a little technique that we can do while everyone's catching up on their leaves. So I'm just taking that medium liner brush cleaned it in the water and I'm getting just a little bit of my lighter green. And all I am gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of scrub. This is a bonus technique for those that are catching up on their leaves. Okay. I am just gonna very randomly scrub back and forth with the watered down lighter green over my circle. And all that is doing is adding a softer edge to that, to that line that we use to create our pattern. So I'm just scrubbing over that circle. Let's see if I get that closer. See how it's just adding a little bit, the softest amount of color around that line. And which brush are you using right now for this? I'm using the number three round brush. There you go. Everything we've done so far is with watered down acrylic paint. But all you're doing is softening that line just the littlest bit. For those of you who are catching up on your leaves, don't worry about this step. your painting will be just as pretty. This is just really just filling in some of that color for those of us that are, that are ready to move on. But always everything we're doing tonight, we're using folk art with water so that it's a much thinner watercolor consistency. Whoops, I went too fast, sorry. <laughs> Okay, how are we looking? Should we start our third leaf? Okay, I think we have okay. to. We just we have to uh, keep on on time. Otherwise, we'll be here super late tonight. Do. All right. Okay. So this on my palette, just so you guys can see what I'm dipping into. This is my lighter green. I'm going to get some water, so that I've got some water, 50% water, 50% paint on the edge. 
gonna clean my brush and this right here is my darker green. Same thing, I'm just gonna mix on the edge of the paint. So I've got light green and dark green. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my light green for no reason, for no reason. And for the holly leaf, you know what actually I'm gonna do? Don't do what I'm doing. I'm gonna pick up the straight acrylic because I want, let's see where I can do this, right up here. I wanna show you guys a holly leaf. So all you're gonna do is draw a line and then starting at the tip on one side only, you're gonna make three little loops. And then you're gonna go back to the top. You're gonna go loop, 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 almost like, what is that? A backwards three. Rocket. Like a rocket. No, a bracket, not a rocket. Oh, a bracket. I said a rocket. I was like, mm. So again, you're going to draw a line off of your circle. That gives you placement. And then go back to the tip and do your little bracket and do your little bracket. So that's what we're going to do for our third leaf. But don't use straight acrylic. Make sure you mix the light green with some water. Okay. So I've got my watercolor consistency. I'm gonna roll my brush. I'm using the number three, and I am gonna move my canvas around, see some areas. So this is a good area. I'm gonna make that line. Go back to the top, bracket, bracket. I like it, John. I like the bracket word. Okay. And then with my light green, I'm gonna do the other side but then we're gonna go back and fill that in with the dark green. So I'm gonna turn my canvas and maybe add one right there. So I'm gonna do a straight line, connecting it to my circle. Your circle is always your base for every single leaf. Then I'm gonna go back to the tip, go right over any leaf that's in the way. You want to start layering now that we're onto this third leaf. You wanna start overlapping a little bit. Remember though, less is more. You can always add leaves. You don't wanna fill in every white area still. You still want some openings in there. I'm gonna go down to maybe right there and I'm gonna make the line. Pick up paint as you need it. I'm gonna turn my canvas all the way around and I'm gonna go to right there, do my line. And just keep turning your canvas until you have these really simple holly leaves going all the way around your canvas. I think I'm gonna do one there, I'm gonna do one there, maybe there. The stem is a great way to just start your placement so you kind of know where you need to add these leaves. I think I'm gonna put two right there. Okay, then I'm gonna go back. Always start back at the tip. Another spot where I overlapped the leaf before. That's perfect. That's actually what you want. I know I turn my canvas so much. Even using, this is a great spot to show. So even though the holly berry I just did, holly leaf, I'm sorry, and the leaf underneath is the exact same green, you can see by adding water and working on a matte finish that you get so much variation in the same color. You see that right there? Same exact green, but because of the water, it's got so many different shades. All right, I think one more. And then set it down and kind of eyeball it just like we did earlier, just to make sure one side doesn't feel heavier than the other. I think I'm gonna add one more up here towards the top. Straight line and then your little brackets. Okay, 
So once you've got your little outline, all I'm gonna do is with the color I've been using, the lighter green, I'm gonna paint in just one side of my holly berry or my holly leaf. I just keep calling them berries. They're just leaves for now. I'm just gonna color in one side and I'm kind of alternating top and bottom of the leaf. So if you wanna do the left on one, the right on another, absolutely change it up because you don't wanna create a consistent pattern around your leaf. Is that, okay, one more. You're just doing half. Yep, I'm only filling in half. You can see like there's a great one. So we outlined in the light green and then I'm just filling in one side of each holly berry. Is that helpful when I hold it up a little bit? Yep, yep, I think people can see that. And now I'm going, this is my darker green on my palette, also with the water, rolling my brush out of it, and I'm gonna color in the other half. Now, when you do this, definitely, let me hold this up and see if you guys can see. You don't have to outline, and or you don't have to stay within that pattern that you created. Actually go over the pattern that you created so it's a much looser finish. Oh, let's see, it's wet, so it's kind of got a glare. So what I mean is don't, don't be really careful to stay within that pattern that you created. Using the dark green, go over that entire side of the leaf. Does that make sense? Makes sense. So now just turn your canvas as you need to to fill in the second side of each holly leaf. By using the two different colors, it just gives you a lot of dimension to this last leaf that we did, which is nice. Um, I think maybe one more. All righty. How's it looking? I think see, let's just pause for, we'll just pause for a minute and let's let's let people catch up. I'm sure that Perfect. Any questions why everyone's catching up? No, I think we're Oh. It's going pretty okay. Everyone seems to understand it. That's for sure. You're doing great. Well, that's good. Okay. It's so funny to see them side by side. Yes, how it just comes together, it's great. Okay. Okay, so now what we're go. gonna do, oh, no? Yes. yes. Okay, so now I am just gonna get more of that dark green and a little bit less water, not acrylic straight out of the bottle, but just a little bit more, maybe uh, two parts acrylic to one part water. And you wanna mix that up again on your palette, twisting your brush to make a fine point. And then what I'm gonna do, let's look at this holly berry. I'm gonna start in the, in the center where the stem is, and I'm just gonna pull a dark line connecting it to my wreath. 
So I'm going to pull a line connecting it to my wreath. Let's see, this will be a good one. Starting pulling a line to connect that to my wreath. Can you guys see that? And this is the dark green in the center of the holly berries with a little bit less water so that your green is just a tad darker. And in you're the center just of the holly pulling. leaves, you mean? Yep, in the center of the holly, did I say berry again? Sorry. Yeah. Yep, in the center of the holly leaves and you are just pulling a dark line through those holly leaves to create even more dimension. If there's any areas where you want a few more darker pine boughs, you can just go in and add one or two little Vs just to give it some dimension. Not on every one, but just on a few. If you've got an area that's maybe a little bit thinner, a little bit a little bit less full. And then we are going, now we're gonna to move to the stencil. Does everyone have a stencil? If you don't have a stencil, all of these techniques that we're doing, so the little berries, I'll show you a way that you can accent your wreath like that without the stencil. Okay, so now that you've got all of these different leaves, you've got a full circle, different techniques, different colors. What we are gonna do is accent all of that with our stencil. So the stencil that we're using tonight you should get, you will get an alphabet. You get two different fonts, uppercase and lowercase. But what we are gonna use first is you get a third sheet that has, can you guys see those? It's got banners, some flowers, but it's got these great little, it's hard to see on there. It's got these great little um, vines with berries with dots on the end. So that is what we are gonna be using tonight. And what I like to do is cut my stencil, cut it if you want to, if not, you absolutely don't have to, but I am gonna cut just that area where those berries are. I'm not gonna cut through any of the other patterns so that you can use those again, but I'm just gonna cut the section that we're using tonight, which is the little berries and the little leaves. Okay, so you guys should have a medium stencil brush. And the only thing I tell people when using a stencil brush is never, ever, ever use water. You want your stencil brush to be absolutely dry. So what we are gonna do is this, let's see, it's hard with the clear. Can you guys see this little leaf pattern? Let's see, maybe over the wood, yeah. It's just a little stem. That is what we're gonna do. And we are going to place it anywhere on our leaf, on our wreath, I'm sorry, using again, the circle as the base. So let it attach to the circle. And then I'm going in my dark green with a dry stencil brush. And then I am just gonna pounce over that. With pounce or swirl, whichever you like best, but not adding any water when stenciling right over that little branch. And then I'm gonna lift that up. And that's just another detail that you have. You're picking that's up- That's pretty similar to what you did before. So, cause there are some folks who don't have the stencil. They could just do a line and the little Vs and then just put a dot on the end of each one, right? Absolutely. John. So if you don't have a stencil, maybe what would be the best is use your liner brush, and this is my dark green, and mix just a little bit darker. You don't want straight acrylic, but you don't want as light of a dark green. And then, for example, right here, 
I'm gonna do that same type of line. I'm gonna do little lines coming off of that. Very similar to the stencil. And then I'm just gonna put a little dot at the end of each little stem. So yeah. absolutely the same thing if you do not have a stencil. I just really want you guys to see the magic of having a stencil whenever you're painting something to just add another layer to a painted yeah. canvas. So and I added is that again. Darker green. For people who are asking, yep. this is she's just back to the darker green. A, a darker tiny green. And if you're using the stencil, use the acrylic right out of the bottle, no water. But if you're using a brush to paint it, um, add a little bit more paint, but you still want some water in there so that you've got the movement of the paint on your canvas. And I'm just very randomly overlapping this darker branch over the watercolor leaves that we have painted. I'm gonna add one over there. You don't wanna add any water when using a stencil. For years, I didn't like to stencil because it never was, it never worked out for me. And then someone told me never ever add water and now I love to stencil. So I'm gonna put one right there. And there's no right or wrong. You're just moving it around, filling in random areas with this darker green pattern. I think I'm gonna do another one down here. See how it's just filling in and creating all of that dimension? Yeah, it's totally coming together. You can see it. Okay, any questions about using the stencil? I don't think so. Do a lot of people have the stencil or do most, are most people not using the stencil? Because I can paint more of these if that would be helpful for sure. There are several folks who don't have the stencil, but... Um, Let me show you one more time. If you don't have a stencil, then, then, then some people do. Different yeah, the only difference is add a little bit more green, a little less water. And then where with the pine branch, we did a line and then a bunch of these back and forth. Can you guys see that on there? Yeah. Yeah. With, with this one, just do a long line and then just do very few longer stems and then put a little dot on the end of each one. Same technique, just very simple, just to add more layers in there. Oh, where'd I put my stencil? Okay, and then if you're using the stencil with me, there's this little pattern that's got those little berries on there. For that one, I'm using Cardinal Red, but again, use any red that you like. A dark burgundy would be beautiful. A plum color would be pretty. Don't clean, another tip when stenciling, don't clean your brush and dry it off on a paper towel and think that it is dry enough. Even that much moisture in your brush will make stenciling very, very hard. So I'm getting a second stencil brush, totally dry, and I'm just loading the red right out of the bottle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did. I'm just gonna randomly place that pattern and I'm gonna do that in the red. Pull that off and you've got those cute little holly berries. I'm gonna do another one, always using your circle as a base. You guys see that? Yeah. Yeah, maybe hold it up so we can see close. Oh, okay, let me get this one. Okay, ready, Nicole? 
Yeah, but again, that would be super easy if you don't have a stencil, guys, just make a little line and you could even use like what, like a, a pencil eraser or something to make those red dots or? Yeah, look, so here is our is our number one liner that we've been using. You could use the red, just do the simplest little line and then you could use the, actually the end of the brush and just dip it in the red or dip the handle of the brush in the red and just do a few little circles on your line. A very simple way to do the holly if you guys don't have the stencil. Whenever I see a stencil that has just a really good basic pattern, whether it be leaves, whether it be a font, um, I always buy it because it's such a great way to accent so many different projects. I'm just gonna randomly add these holly berries just to give a pop of color to your wreath. A great thing about when you stencil, you use such little paint that it almost dries instantly. So you don't have to wait in between. You can see I'm just moving it around. Bristle. Yeah, so you just wanna keep filling that in. Okay, so now I want to show you guys how to personalize. And we are going to use the stencil. And there's so many different fonts. If you don't have this, I think John mentioned in the beginning, you could use a Sharpie, you could use a paint marker, you could leave it blank. You don't need the word at all. It's beautiful without the word. Um, but what we are going to do, I want to show you just a cute little way to always get perfect placement when you're using an alphabet stencil. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use the edge of my stencil just to draw, this is a scratch piece of paper, just to draw a straight line on a regular piece of notebook paper. And then I am going to use it using a pencil, I am gonna write, or I'm gonna trace through my stencil doesn't have to be exactly, but I am gonna spell out my word. And these stencils are so great to work with. They're clear, so you can see. Can you guys see on there? Yeah, it's a you little hard the, with the white on white, but you yeah. Get it. You can see the P, and then you can see exactly where your next letter needs to be. And I'm just gonna trace that with a pencil. And I'm going to keep going until I've spelled out my word. Now, you guys, make sure you have fun with it. If you want to do a different word, if you want to do a last name, absolutely. Personalize it any way that you guys want to. Except spelling it wrong. Look. Don't do that. <laughs> I put a C. I'm going to go right over that with my pattern. And I'm going to just to make sure that it is perfectly lined up. Okay, then the E. Especially if you had a much longer word, you would wanna make sure that it stayed straight. Now here's the little tip. So you've got your pattern. Very rough, but you can see that it's spaced perfectly. Now you want to cut that pattern out, a large rectangle around your word. And you want to cut in between each letter, but keeping the top of your pattern attached. So you want to make little tabs for each letter. And then you want to set that, place that in the middle of your wreath where you want it. And you're going to tape that down, which is the little piece of stencil tape. And the reason we do that is because then the spacing for your word mm -hmm. will be perfect. 
This is so a great did, technique for, for anybody because one of the hardest things with stenciling, particularly if it's not already written out as a full word, if you have to piece it together letter by letter, is getting it absolutely. straight and getting it even. So this is a really, this is a very absolutely. cool technique. It is yeah. the hardest thing to do. Even when the stencil is clear, I always think it's a little bit tricky. Okay, so you've got your word placed perfectly. And then what you do is you lay your stencil. So I'm using the P, I'm laying that over my pattern. And then I'm sneaking under there and pulling off just the P tab. I'm folding that up. So now my canvas is exposed underneath that. I'm gonna be doing this in navy. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the navy blue on my palette using a dry stencil brush, no water whenever we stencil. And I'm gonna stencil just the P with the dark navy. And I'm gonna remove that. You can see my pattern is still there, but I've folded up the P. Okay, then I'm gonna get my lowercase. Actually, I'm gonna tear off that tab. Okay, so now I'm gonna position my next letter over my little paper pattern so I know it's perfect. Hold that down, sneak under there and remove that piece of paper so my canvas is exposed. And I'm gonna stencil the E also with the navy blue. Yes, people are loving this tip because it really is such a, uh, a pain it's to try to do. It's such an easy way. And then I'm gonna tear that little tab off. I'm gonna do the same thing with my next letter. So there's my A sneak under it, whoops, and oh, it got stuck on my stencil. Now, Kirsten, do you have to be careful with the stencil touching the letter you just did so it doesn't smear it or you know, you know what, what I mean? The, I know you would think the greatest thing about stenciling because you use such little paint is that's totally dry. It's mm. almost dry as you do it. So, so super dry the, brush technique, yes. Super dry. So the, the key to stenciling is a dry brush and literally dry, not paper towel dry, but air dried overnight and very, very little paint. So there's my A. You can see perfect placement. Then I'm gonna tear that little tab off. And now my C. Hold it in place and then sneak under it and fold that tab up. Very little paint. You pounce in the paint when you're stenciling and then you remove almost all the paint. You want very little paint. Oops. Remove that little tab, and then we've got one more. Place that over my pencil pattern. Sneak under there and fold my tab up. Get a little bit more of the dark blue. Yep. and then pull my last tab off. And you have perfect place placement and you have got a straight word. So another thing that I love to do when stenciling is I love to connect the bridges. Um, and all that does is it's just a little way of cheating and making it look like you hand lettered it when you used a stencil to create the pattern. And all a bridge is, is those little openings where a stencil has to be connected to work. So to fill that in, I'm using my thinnest liner brush with, this is a number one. 
I'm going in that same navy color, adding just the tiniest bit of water, not like we did before, but just a little bit so that it moves a little bit better. Rolling the tip of my brush out of the paint, into the paint and then out. And then let's see if I can hold this up at the same time. So all I'm doing is see right there where there's that little white area, that's called a bridge. I'm gonna connect those. So I'm gonna connect that in the E, and then I'm gonna bring the E over and connect it to the A. I'm gonna connect that little top of my A, connect that little bridge right there, connect my A to my C. Oops, get a little bit more paint, but not too much. And just keep connecting everything. It just disguises the fact that it's a stencil and yeah. it looks so much more hand lettered, yeah? Absolutely. Little tips for cheating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now all we are gonna do to finish this off is I am getting my larger flat brush. This is a number 12 flat brush and I'm going in that light blue that we use that's in the wreath. And what I wanna do is just really create a really soft effect around the edge. It's hard to see because it's light blue, but a really soft effect by just randomly brushing the watered down light blue. Let's see if you guys can see that. Around the edge of the canvas. I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker just so you guys can see it. You guys see that? Yeah, so you just made like almost like just like a wash with the paint, huh? Yep, a really soft wash and I'm using the light blue and just, I'm gonna go over some of my wreath. I'm gonna be a little bit more on one side of my canvas so it's not even. Kind of creating almost a vintage almost distressed farmhouse look by washing color onto the background. You're going over your wreath just in some areas, just to kind of pull all of those colors together. But I don't wanna do the entire canvas because I want a little bit of the white to be different. So it's a little bit, it's hard to see. It's a little bit wider on that side, a little bit lighter with a little bit more blue up here in this section of the canvas. But just a really soft wash that makes it look a little bit vintage, a little bit distressed. If you don't have the light blue, you could add a little bit of soft, soft green with a lot of water, that would be really nice. And then all we're gonna do at the end, this is the one time that you do add water to a stencil brush. So I'm gonna clean in my water, any of those stencil brushes that we have used. And then I, can you guys see the navy blue? There's the navy blue on my palette. I'm gonna make a very watery consistency, navy blue and water using my stencil brush. And then on the paper towel, I'm gonna take some of it off because a stencil brush will hold a lot more paint than a regular brush. So I'm gonna remove some of that. And then a little tip that I learned is getting any other brush. So this is just a clean brush. Any size that you have will, fine, will be fine. Loading watered down navy blue into my stencil brush, holding it on the very tip and using this as a base to hit it, it's just a really controlled way to splatter. So I'm just gonna tap that brush and I'm just gonna lightly splatter that canvas. A lot of people fly spec by using their nail, um, by using an old toothbrush, all work beautifully, but this is just a really nice controlled way to create that splatter on your canvas. And I just added that just to add some character, kind of give it again, that vintage farmhouse look. And that's our wreath. All right. I hope Any everybody questions? enjoyed it. 
How did it go? Any questions? Oh, I, I splattered. Know. I saw a quick question. I splattered with the navy blue. I think everybody did it. They were loving the uh, they were loving the stencil technique for sure. That's oh, that's awesome. a, a good one for everybody. Yes, and everybody is. Uh, all the comments are coming in now. Everyone's doing great. Great job. You want to hold it up one more time so everyone can see? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Well, guys, listen, we definitely want to see what you were able to create. So we oh, um, sure. we love seeing the next day when you all post in our um, Let's Paint with Plaid um, Facebook group. So I do invite you to join that. So again, if you go on um, Plaid Craft, or sorry, go on Facebook and join the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. That's a great yep. way uh, to join a community of painters and share what you've um, what you've made. And um, if you like this sort of uh, education, please be sure to check Michael's website for these classes because we go live every Monday. There's a lot of great different classes that they have. Um, we do several different types of classes in addition to painting with yep. them. Um, and then on Plaid's Facebook channel, we also do um, we also do uh, quite a bit of education. We go live at least twice every week, usually more. So oh, please follow sure. Plaid Crafts on Facebook. Oh, I can see Kirsten and, holding up. Yep, yeah, hold it up. So this oh, is next yes. week's class with Jess, the greatest teacher in the world. And you're learning this beautiful Christmas tree. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's treasure gold. There's this beautiful plaid. So that is next week's class, everybody. Absolutely. So yeah. again, uh, join us next week. And we look forward to seeing everybody's wreath painting. Um, yeah. And uh, and I guess that's it. We'll we'll see you next week. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Everyone. Merry Christmas.